So there is a question that everybody is asking and that is how good is the Chinese Air Force? Obviously there is no easy answer and the questions that seem easy are often deceptively easy. So let's make a whole video about it and despite the fact that many have done this already we will try as usual to focus on something which is not easily found anywhere else on YouTube. But first, the elephant in the room! So Chinese aircraft and weapons are just copies of Russian designs. There's nothing original, they copied everything and everything is just a big pile of rubbish. I wish life was so clear cut. It's true the Chinese didn't produce anything original for quite a long time and the technologies they used were either reverse engineering or acquired through licensed productions or plain technology transfers from abroad. And yes, every major country does intelligence against everybody else, even among allies, all the time. And basically China is no exception, so it is well possible that some of the Chinese technologies have been acquired of, or have been started by some know-how derived from intelligence. However, in the last 20 years, a lot has changed and there have been massive resources dedicated to technology improvement. Despite some visible similarities with foreign products, the technologies that are in use today are mostly indigenous. The similarities that you see derive mostly from commonality of design choices rather than plain coping. Just look at the stealth aircraft being designed and produced around the world, they all look the same because the problem that they're trying to solve is basically the same and they use the same solution. Or just consider the case of Delta Canar configuration. It is a very, very efficient configuration for a modern jet fighter, so it's no surprise that the Chinese had chosen that for the J-10. Also the Chinese have in service different versions and different variants of the flanker, many of them actually indigenous, in which they're basically using the flexibility of the flanker platform to add their own technology. But no wonder they still look like flankers from the outside. Russian and Chinese technology have been undervalued for a long time. But in the 21st century, this approach is no longer justified. The Chinese Air Force is numerically second only to the United States, and it would probably require a number of videos in itself to be fully covered, and maybe we will cross that bridge in the near future. What matters now is to get a relatively good picture of the general force structure. The core is formed by about 1300 fourth and fifth generation fighters. It is difficult to assess the actual capabilities of these aircraft. We don't have much information, but analysts somehow agree that they are capable platform not too far from the Western equivalents. In this core, there are three families, the J-10, various versions of the flankers, and the J-20. This composition is probably going to remain roughly the same in the near future, even though the percentage of J-20s is actually going to increase. China today is actually building about 100 aircraft a year, so we may expect that this core is going to slowly increase in number, even though we may also expect that some of these 100 aircraft go and replace older models. Before moving on, please notice that this is a really good mix of different platforms with different capabilities and different technologies, which makes for a very resilient mix. About 
500 aircraft of older generations are still in service together with about 200 trainers that can carry weapons. Some of these aircraft are still useful as reconnaissance or electronic warfare platforms, but most of them are pretty much obsolete and should be used for second line tasks or just in an emergency. However, we may argue that they keep quite a large body of pilots trained and ready to move on to newer platforms when they will be available. China is also one of the few countries that still have a proper bomber in service. The H-6 is similar to the old Soviet 216 Badger only from an aerodynamic configuration and structural point of view. Otherwise, they are completely new aircraft. There are not that many, but they are essential for the new role of power projection in the first two island chains, because their role is to be the missile track that is required to attack large naval formations. Actually, a stealth bomber has been announced, but we really know nothing so far. Something which is little known is the attention that the Chinese are placing on airborne radars. There are about 25 to 30 aircraft in service of different models, but some of them are very modern. The production is still ongoing. They're generally smaller than the Western counterparts. They are also turboprops, but they are all equipped with modern AESA radars, and they seem to be used exactly in the way that Western Air Forces use OWACs. On the flip side, there is a real lack of capability of aerial refueling. Today, the role is covered by a special version of the H6 and there are very few units between 10 and 20 which are not proportionate to the number of frontline combat aircraft. However, like everything in China, the situation is quickly evolving. There is a tanker version of the Y20 transport planned and it is expected to enter service soon. One important aspect where I didn't manage to find information is readiness. That is, how many of all these aircraft are ready for use at any given moment. This is very important to assess the capability of the Chinese Air Force, but as I said, I didn't find any information. If you have any, please add in the comment below. And while you're there, why not subscribe or just become a channel supporter through Patreon or Subscribestar or just becoming a member. Just say. Okay, now what all this hardware is good for? The Chinese doctrine for a very long time has been even more rigid than the Soviet doctrine. Pilots were expected to follow a flight plan, fire against the targets they were ordered to, when they were ordered to, with the weapons they were ordered to by the ground controllers. The experience of the last 50 years has proven this doctrine to be ineffective and actually it was a waste of resources. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the whole of the Chinese military doctrine has been subject to a revision. The focus shifted from a popular war based on guerrilla, limited operations, limited regional conflict, and limited power projections beyond the borders. The Chinese are well aware that they still don't have the power projection capabilities of the United States, but for example, the bases in Djibouti and in Pakistan show where they are headed. So the Air Force has begun restructuring along these lines, for example, integrating expeditionary capabilities or developing the know-how for maritime operations. Very important is the fact that the pilot's training syllabus has become more are similar to the Western Air Force training. The Chinese now focus on the capability and the proficiency of the individual pilot within a command and control environment, which is relatively similar to the American one, even though I suppose they keep speaking Chinese. In the same way the Russians have evolved away from the Soviet model, the Chinese did the same, but they went even further. The interesting element from my point of view is that while the Russians have embraced asymmetry to control confront a Western opponent, the Chinese are going full Monty. They are trying to match the West with a similar doctrine, but indigenous hardware. Those who follow this channel already know that I think that the quality of a combat force is largely determined by the logistics 
and the human element behind the hardware. The Chinese government has been willing to invest a large amount of money and resources in aerospace development. The Chinese had a sharp focus on improving the industry and today they have at least two or three large complex that are adequate to design and build modern combat aircraft. They also tend to use a very pragmatic approach. They introduce a new type without all the capabilities in place, but then they very quickly iterate where the technology was not available. The Chinese have established cooperation with foreign manufacturers, and sometimes they push the boundaries through reverse engineering. At the same time, the Air Force is continuously developing new tactics around these new technologies. This capability of quickly iterating and moving forward with a, a large and unrelenting support from the government and the public is probably the single most important strong point of the Chinese Air Force. It is so not only because it is promoting development and catching up with the West, but is also providing a moving target to the potential opponents. And in fact, the result of this policy is literally a deluge of radar, electronics, ECM, uh, weapons, of any kind, long range, short range, uh, air to air, air to ground, drones, and anything else you can think of. It is really difficult to keep up with all these developments. Then, not everything is perfect. Not even in China. Propulsion has greatly improved in the last years, but still the Chinese engines are not at the same level as the Western ones. There is a gap in trust weight ratio, but mainly the gap is in reliability. They require more maintenance, and this means either using more resources to keep the sortie generation capability high or reducing the sortie generation capability. Another weak point is in the air to ground domain, where a limited number of guided weapons is available, and even those weapons are mostly designed to attack static targets. For example, a missing element is a weapon in the class of the Maverick or the Brimstone, or even anything similar to the French AASM family. But, like everything in China, this situation is expected to change soon. Actually, this video in two years will probably be very outdated. <laughs> Third and crucial element is training. As we said before, it has greatly, greatly improved, but is still not at the same level as the West. The Chinese still don't have a red flag and they lack combat experience. But even in this case, the situation is quickly evolving. They have started something that they call competitions where the pilots are pitted against different types of aircraft. They invited the Russians. They are trying to be creative in the tactics. And, and by the way, they don't have combat experience because they didn't fight any war, and I believe we should all be happy for that. Nobody really knows what's going to happen in case the Chinese system should interact with Western systems, uh, because, well, it's complicated. However, if you want to learn more about what may happen and the kind of consideration that we can do around this, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. And by the way, this helps the channel a lot. Thank you very much for watching and see you there.